Hello and welcome to today's video. Today we're not going to go over anything too specific. I just wanted to give you a couple of tips and tricks that I use around the studio uh, just to keep myself organized and to help me uh, get things finished. So I'm going to be moving the camera around a lot today. Some of them are safety tips. Some of them are just little tricks for working on the long arm. But we're going to get started. I'm going to move the camera and show you my first tip and trick. This first one for me starts at the back of the machine. Uh, I know that in my area sometimes I have power outages. In the last month we've had three power outages and I'm always worried about a uh, surge coming through the electrical line. So whenever I'm not using my machine when I'm not in the studio, my machine's not plugged in. I only plug in my machine when I come out to use it and then I keep it on. I do have my machine on a surge protector but my machine is so valuable to me both in importance and in cost that I don't want anything to happen to it and I don't want a downtime even if there was an issue with having to replace it with the insurance or something. Um, I don't want to be without my machine for that length of time because I know I waited for a couple months to get my machine originally. So I always keep my machine unplugged and obviously it's powered off so uh, I also make myself little notes this particular one just says pray I always pray when I start my machine and even if you don't believe in uh, higher power I think it's a good thing to focus your attention on the moment focus on what you're doing and to be present uh, in, in our actions so these are uh, some of my tips for the machine and uh, the next thing I'm going to talk about is the pantograph grids. I've used one of these with my machine ever since I've had a machine. So we're going to change the camera location and talk a little bit about that. The pantograph grids is a, a plastic sheet that goes over top of your pantographs. Uh, we sell these on our website. They come in different sizes, so you would buy it according to the size of your long arm machine. Now, I have had one of these from the very first moment that I've had a long arm because they serve a lot of functions. Uh, one thing is that they protect your pantograph. So if you're ever drinking coffee or tea, in my case, and you bump your cup, you don't spill and ruin one of your pantographs. It all ke also keeps them flat on the machine so that you're not, your machine isn't reading ripples. And uh, the main thing is that it helps you to center where the pantograph goes on the back of the machine. Um, I used clips to keep my pantograph grids in place once I uh, centered them so I don't have to keep finding the center. Uh, one thing I will tell you it is marked from the zero out from the center and so when you put this on your long arm machine you always trim off the two edges equally not just one edge because you want the center zero to be at the center of the back of the machine. The nice thing about the pantograph grids is that it allows you to edit a, a quilting design. So whenever I put my quilt on the machine I always use the needle at the edge of the quilt and then mark that location on the pantograph grids. What that does is make sure that I know where the stop and start are so um, I know when to quit sewing. Because in the back of the machine you're not looking at the quilt, you're looking at the pantograph. Uh, and allows you to edit the quilting design on the grids and um, then you can go ahead and just clean it off when you're finished because it's just you just use a dry erase marker when you're finished. Another thing, if you're using blocks or like in this case, this is a Dusty Miller corner block, I could go ahead and position these and get it loaded so that the design was perfectly overlapped and I could mark on the grids any notations or the pattern that I needed. And that way I could use cornerstones, I could do blocks, and they would be perfectly positioned for sewing on the quilt. 
So the pantograph grids to me is essential for working with a pantograph. It is just a one-time purchase, so once you buy it, you have it for life, and they really make a perfect companion for working with the pantographs. So I highly recommend that. I have loved mine. Another thing on the back of the machine uh, for keeping my rails clean, I like to use the white board care uh, cleaner to clean the rails and to clean the wheels. So this is for just comes as a wipe that you would just pull out and uh, you could use that to wipe the rails and then I would also take the covers off of the wheels and clean those. Sometimes you'll, uh, when you see the wheels they've got black streaks on them and those black streaks kind of dull down the movement of the machine so I take the covers off of all of the wheels and use the uh, whiteboard cleaner and clean those wheels and the rails of the machine and make sure there's no little threads caught in there so this is another great tip just to keep the back of your machine working smooth and clean This next trick I learned from Jamie Wallen when I was taking classes with him. Uh, a lot of times when you have the uh, ruler table on your machine, it adds a lot of extra space on the side of the machine and it requires a much wider backing. Uh, sometimes you don't get that from a customer and when you're bringing your machine over, it will hit the clips, whatever type of clips that you're using. Uh, to clamp the side of the machine and the way that uh, you can solve that is with a cheap pair of cur uh, curtain hanger these are like a couple bucks at your local DIY store and you just slip this up and you can slide it for different degrees of height but you can see now when I bring the machine over the machine does not catch on the clamps, whatever clamping system that you use. So uh, it's just a, a kind of an emergency tip to use to keep the edge of the machine from hitting your clamps, but it really comes in useful and at a couple bucks, they're certainly worth having on hand just in case you need it. My next little tip is just to have some little bean bags. Now I have made these bean bags with some leftover canvas and they just are filled with pinto beans in my case because they were very clean. Uh, but there are a lot of times when there's a little bit of excess fabric and sometimes I want to hold my hand while I'm sewing to take up some of the excess fabric in a border or sometimes I'm trying to do some little micro quilting and the machine is vibrating the quilt too much and I can't see uh, as accurately as I want and a bean bag close to the area you're quilting just helps cut down on some of the vibration. I also use these in sometimes on my domestic machine just to keep something on the top of the table and keep it from sliding off. Now there's no specific measurement for these because um, they're just the, there's no requirement for it. Um, I just made a variety of sizes. This one has four different pockets to it. Um, so it's a, it covers a bigger area. This one's a little more narrow. Some of them have more beans than others, so the weight distribution is a little different. But I would just experiment with them. I mean, the beans are all, uh, cheap also, a couple dollars for a huge bag of beans. And I just use leftover canvas, but even a, a yard of canvas would make you, you know, probably six or eight different size bags. So these are just uh, kind of fun and handy to have for working on a project as well. So that's another one of my tips for you. And uh, next thing I want to talk about is a couple safety things. When you look at this uh, image, probably the most prominent thing you're going to notice are the quilts that I have hanging. I have the vintage sewing machines hanging on the back of the door. I have Winter Wonderland hanging on the wall and some of the stockings that we made in an earlier video. But there's two really important things on this wall that I don't want you to overlook. 
One of them is the tiny white circle above the green stocking. That is a smoke detector. It's both a smoke and carbon monoxide detector. I happen to have gas heat in this building and um, carbon monoxide is both odorless and tasteless. So if you had a leak, you wouldn't know it until you were unconscious. So I highly recommend your sewing studio have this uh, type of device in there. Because of all of the value of what we pour into our quilting space, I think it's critical that we protect it with uh, any tool that is at our disposal. Another thing you'll notice at the bottom of the picture is a fire extinguisher. I have two fire extinguishers in this room. There's one by each exit. Um, but again, as much money as I have spent on the machine, on the fabric, and all of the quilts that are stored in this room, it's certainly worth buying a $20 or $30 fire extinguisher to both protect your property and yourself in the event of a fire. We have a lot of electronics in these rooms with the sewing machines and the computer and the printers, uh, heaters, lighting, the long arm machine. So there's a lot of reason that you'd want to have a smoke detector and a fire extinguisher in your space. So please make sure you check your space Check the batteries on your smoke detector and make sure that you have fully charged fire extinguisher at your disposal and know where they're located. And then I have one last tip for you on the long arm machine. Okay, I guess I have two more things. Uh, this is just a piece of uh, needle punched batting with lint on it. And I'm hoping you'll be able to see that this is the side where the needles came down into the batting and needle punched it. So the needles would have gone in this direction. On this side, you see little pimples. And this is how you determine the top and the bottom of batting. It always goes on the quilt and on the machine the way that it was punched. So the dimples on top, the pimples on the bottom and that way it prevents you from getting some of the bearding on the back of the machine. The last thing that I have is another uh, trick for working with a quilt that may have a little bit of excess fabric in it. And that's with something that we all have plenty of on hand and that's scrap batting. These are just strips of batting. This, in this case it's a single layer. These could be cut any width or any length that you need. This particular one is a triple layer, it's cut six inches wide, and this is a double layer. And what you would do with this is put it into the roll up of the quilt. The walk in front. So if I had excess fabric in the border, what I would have done is put this on top of the quilt as I'm rolling it up. And as I'm doing that, that's going to cause my take up portion of the quilt to get fatter and pull a little bit stronger on that area, which will help pull out some of that excess fabric. So these could be cut in any width that you needed. They could be cut uh, in any length that you needed. And I just keep these in the studio and you could mark on them, but it's pretty easy to see that this is a double layer these are single and this is a triple layer. Also, if you had a quilt that was excess fabric in the center, you could load that here as you were rolling it up on both sides and that would help pull the fabric in, in there. Um, because the batting is soft, it's not going to create a whole lot of stretch. Uh, just give you enough pull to help ease in some of that excess fabric. So those are just some of our tips and tricks for you from Urban Elements. We hope that uh, some of these might be useful to you, but we certainly hope that you would at least check for the safety of your studio and uh, get a smoke detector with a carbon monoxide detector built in and also a fire extinguisher. Have a good afternoon.